I saw a comment about someone suspects most of the people with some kind of power in our society, like CEOs of big corporations and people in high positions in government. They suspect all those people are sociopaths. Maybe most of them, not all. The author of this comment doesn't really matter, except that they're progressive, they identify as anti-capitalist. They also mention something about feeling disempowered. Details don't matter. Everything else I say about them will just be like wild guesses from general what the left is. It's not about the specific person. I just had some comments loosely related to this. One is, calling the rulers sociopathic is othering them. It is an us versus them mentality. It's mean. It doesn't solve the problem to say that some people are just inherently bad. I think it's factually incorrect, and it is not a attempt to get a win-win solution. It's not part of a mindset of seeking win-win solutions. So I think it is unprogressive to view certain people as the enemies and call them sociopaths and think, when I hear sociopath, I think you're saying they are inherently bad, they're broken in some way, or they're just a fundamentally bad person, unlike most of us. So one of the implications there is that if this author or his friends or just most random people off the street, or at least most like center-left people off the street or something, if they were in power instead, things would be much better. The reason society is fucked up is because we have the wrong rulers in charge. So it violates Popper's who should rule issue. And it suggests that we have these corrupt people in power. And if only we had different people in power, they would do better. But I think the structure of society, the way power is set up, the incentives would make it very hard if you put someone who thinks they're better in a position of power. I think either they would lose power or they would get corrupted. There's the old saying, power corrupts. I think it would not work out well for most people to actually accomplish things and make things better with power. This is partly because it's easy to be a critic, but it's hard to figure out what to actually do that would be better. Like You can identify some problems, but then when you try to come up with a, sol a solution, there are often a bunch of unintended consequences. You try to solve a few problems that you notice, and you break a bunch of other things. There are reasons things that were the way they were. They're trying to deal with some other problems you're not aware of. So actually solving things is a lot harder than noticing some imperfections or even major flaws. But a lot of people, they see some of the problems and they're right about the problems. They're not always right, but often they are right about some of the problems. And then they take away from that that the people in power must just not care or be really stupid or be very mean or something. Otherwise, why don't they just solve those problems? But actually, solving the problems is hard because you have to also do many other things at the same time. You're trying to solve many problems at once. And the problems that you're noticing, the ones that are not solved, are just a small fraction of all the problems that need to be dealt with. So yes, it's easy to come up with a change that would solve the three problems you're noticing. But if it also has to solve the 100 other problems that are currently already being solved, it's much harder to target a solution at 103 problems and make it work for all of them. What ends up happening is they come up with a new solution and it solves the three they care about and 50 other ones, but it breaks 50 things and it ends up being much worse. Or sometimes it only breaks three things, but they're three different ones and some other group feels disempowered and annoyed and whatever, and it's not particularly better or worse than before. So another thing I want to talk about, I am pro-capitalist. So there's a big difference in perspective. Nevertheless, there is overlap. I agree that there are problems with the rulers, the people in power. Things are going wrong there. The system is, in some sense, in some ways, broken. There's a lot of room for improvement. I don't think getting different people in power would fix it. What's needed to fix it are different institutions, traditions, structures, expectations, popular opinions. One of the ways to try to approach this is educate the masses. 
if the masses were less easily fooled and duped and stuff, then some things would get better. When you talk about educating the masses, the general assumption is that you, the speaker, are not part of the masses. You're thinking you stuff, and if only other people were wise and clever and knowledgeable, things would be better. And that has a kind of arrogance or condescension to it. And I personally have done a lot of work to learn things and know things, and have been open to debate, and I have various objective reasons for thinking I know what I'm talking about in some ways. But I don't want to litigate that. That's not the point, I think. What I wanted to mention is I think the person who wrote this stuff and most similar people would here educate the masses and they think other people need to get better and I think that they too need to get better, that they are too easily led and fooled and duped and stuff. Calling the ruler sociopathic is not actually a very sophisticated, thought-out opinion that doesn't show a bunch of knowledge of nuance of what's going on there. It doesn't show a clear understanding of what the incentives are and what the difficulties are. It doesn't show a bunch of wisdom in being the kind of person who's not going to get fooled by propaganda. It shows more of a willingness to jump on a tribal bandwagon to other a group to have us first them in group first out group. So that is just like the masses in general. That's part of the masses. That's the kind of attitude of the mob. Another thing I was thinking about is I basically I can't get people like this, any of them, to debate me in any kind of serious, sustained way. It's not just them, it's basically all groups. No one will debate. But there are things that could be interesting to talk about. What do they think capitalism is? They're opposed to capitalism, but what do they think it is? And then what do they want in society? And then which like rules of capitalism do they think prevent or block or make a lot more difficult the, the outcomes they want for society. I think this kind of thing is interesting because there's quite a bit of overlap on desired outcomes between me and them. I'm confident of this. That some of the things they want are things like a free society, they'll say, where everyone is well off. They want there to be a lot of wealth and a lot of freedom and a lot of like tolerance of individual differences. Maybe they're lying, I don't know, maybe they're confused. Because a lot of their policies really push in the other direction, but... But anyways, I think if you ask them, they'll say that's what they want, and then that they're against capitalism. Which part of capitalism do you think contradicts those things? Capitalism is a system meant for creating wealth and providing widespread freedom. Part of what they don't like about it, I think, is that it doesn't... It doesn't solve all the problems. Like, capitalism just does less than some of the things they want. They want to have a ruler who can say, hey, I'm mandating X. And capitalism would say, no, limited government. The government shouldn't be doing X. If you want X, start a company or a charity to do it. So there's a question of on what level should certain problems be solved? If you want to feed the hungry, should the government be doing that? Should the economic system somehow have feeding the hungry built into it? Or should it be charities? Or should it be individual giving? Or should it be churches that are doing this? Or a mix of things? What is the right tool to solve the problem? And it's interesting because they say most of the rulers are sociopathic. Are they in favor of big government and having the government solve this problem? In other words, having rulers making decisions like which hungry people get what sort of handouts? That seems problematic if you don't trust the rulers, and I don't, and I think a lot of people don't, and that's reasonable and right, that you should not trust the rulers, the politicians, the big CEOs, whatever. If you don't trust them, then you should... My take is that we don't want to concentrate power so that there are rulers. We should have a limited government that doesn't do that much, so if you're in charge of it, you have a limited role. So there are some leftists who have positions like voluntary communism. Rather than government-enforced socialism or sharing of resources or whatever, rather than having rulers decide who gets what, they just think that we should voluntarily act more like that. And there are a lot of things to say about that. There are problems with it. But I think one of the important things is how does that contradict capitalism? If the rules are that you're free to trade and buy and sell, 
and then you are voluntarily encouraged and persuaded to do some sort of communal sharing arrangement if you want to. That is literally a capitalist society. Like, it has all the rules that pro-capitalist people want. It is a free market, and you just don't have to participate in the market. That's part of freedom. Or you can participate in limited ways. It's up to you. If you want to have a family group, an extended family, a commune, a whole city that is sharing in some other way on a voluntary, voluntary basis, a contractual basis, whatever, you can do that. Capitalism does not prohibit that. So it could be that they don't, in some sense, even object to capitalism. It's just the, I don't know, the spirit or ethos of capitalism rather than the economic system itself where there's an issue. A lot of these people, though, they're so tribalist, so us versus them, so willing to call the other side sociopaths that it's very hard to talk these things through and, and clarify. And their opinions are not really all that thought out, so clarifying the details doesn't actually solve things and work because they don't really know what they're talking about anyways. I think that's a common problem. I think that's one of the reasons people won't debate very much is they don't actually know anything. They're not really that into it. They like to express little soundbite opinions sometimes. They have, there are incentives for why they do that. And they want, some people want to seem intellectual. But actually reading a bunch of books and trying in an organized way to figure out the meanings of different political systems and economic systems and so on and what their consequences are and which ones are better and why and what the advantages and disadvantages of different systems are and so on and all that. Like, that's a lot of work, and most people just don't want to do it. There are academics who do some of that, but they specialize in specific things, and there are a lot of problems with what they do, and there, a lot of them are not that into outreach or discussion. Their incentive structure is published in certain specific journals that matter to their career, not be a public intellectual. Who actually talks with the public productively. Another problem is, you could think of it, there are a bunch of intellectuals, and 90% of them are liars. They're dishonest, they don't actually want to have rational discussion, and 10% do want to have rational discussion, but it's hard for the 10% to find each other, because 9 out of 10 of the people you try to talk to are liars who aren't into that. So how can the ones who are not lying find each other when there's all these other people who are pretending to be part of the group and so you get all these red herrings? When there are all these imposters, it's hard for the serious people to find each other. Another issue is how do people get in power? The basic answer is social climbing. There are social status hierarchies, and if you get to the top of the right ones, then you can be a CEO of a large corporation or a government ruler or something. It's not the only way. You can found a small company while having low social status, and then a few small companies grow into big companies. And if you stay in charge the whole time, now you're in charge of a big company. Now, while you're growing the company, often you have to make deals with lots of people and talk to lots of people and basically gain social status. And if you don't do all that stuff, you often get pushed out or replaced with some outside CEO who knows how to climb the social hierarchy and make deals with other companies and so on. So often either you're the type of person who could be a ruler or at some point as your company grows, you get pushed out. But occasionally, someone of more of an outsider type ends up very high in a company. But it's not that common. But two people who managed to go from small to big and stay in a lot of power were Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos, CEOs of Facebook and Amazon. Although Bezos stepped down, but I think that was voluntary and he just got tired of doing the job or something, but I didn't really look into it. But one of the, the simple things you can observe about both of those people is they went to elite universities. And so most of the people in power, both in the corporate world and the government, 
went to elite universities. So they're already, in some sense, the right kind of person with the right social network. Going to those elite universities is part of how people social climb and network with a bunch of other social climbers. How do you try to get admitted into elite social groups and make friends with people in high places or people who will be in high places? It's a very sort of incestuous system where the people in the system help the other people in the system, and it's hard for the outsiders. So there are a lot of things wrong with that, but I don't think what's wrong with it is that the successful people are sociopaths. Partly I just think most people are bad at things. Like, there's just not that much competence in the world. A lot of stuff goes wrong because people screw up, not because of any sort of malice. People tend to massively overrate their own competence. And then part of that mindset that lets them do that, they end up overrating other people's competence too, a lot of the time, and how intentional things are. Some other things involved in climbing social hierarchies are appearing to put in low effort and the non-reactive, unbothered, not too much of a striver. Like you're supposed to climb in an effortless way where you're not trying to climb and things just come to you easily. You're supposed to already have it made. You can try to climb in limited ways. If you're 20, you're not expected to have everything 100% already settled, but, but the general thing is its high status to already be good at stuff, already have resources, have people coming to you and wanting things from you, to have your life already in order. And if it's not, just fake it. Put in effort behind the scenes, but hide effort that is publicly visible. Make things look natural and effortless. If you put in effort, it shows that you want things to change. It is low status to be in a bad situation where you want things to change and you're striving for something better it is high status to have a situation that's already good for you to be content and happy and stuff. So one of the reasons that the people in power don't fix much is the kind of person who impresses people and therefore ends up in power tends to either be content with the way things are a fair amount or pretend to be content. Social status is not the only, or perhaps not the core problem with the world, it's just one major problem. It is a big enough problem that if you investigate it and take it seriously and figure out other related problems and so on, it forms like a beginning of infinity. You can find out about more important problems from it. Like, either working on social status will solve stuff, or it will turn up other blockers and you'll get interested in other stuff, move on to some tangents and some related things, and you can end up working on everything important via the starting point of social status. That tends to work with any really big issue. If you pursue it where it leads, it ends up being connected to all the other big issues. Of course, you have to do it well and right and stuff, which is hard. Otherwise, you can get stuck, you can get lost, you can reach a bunch of false conclusions. And so what do you do about that problem? Well, you need philosophy and rationality. You need ways of figuring out when you're wrong and stuck and lost and confused. You need ways of objectively figuring out when your ideas actually work and succeed at goals or not.